beneath the church of St. Wiston's in Repton, England, lies a crypt that at one time held the great kings and royalty of the Anglo-Saxon kingdom of Mercia. People would come here by the thousands just to be able to be in the presence of the bones of those who were buried within. It was so popular that the crypt had to be altered with stairs in and stairs out so there could be an orderly procession for people coming on pilgrimage. The crypt at St. Wiston's is one of the oldest and best examples we have of Anglo-Saxon architecture and it lay hidden and forgotten for centuries. The crypt was originally constructed sometime between 700 and 740 AD for King Ethelbald. Ethelbald was one of the most powerful kings of Mercia and was the man who ushered in Mercian dominance in Britain for what would be the next 80 years. He reigned for 41 years, a length that was unprecedented for a king of that time. To put it into perspective, five kings ruled in Northumbria during the same 41 years that Ethelbald ruled in Mercia. Ethelbald, it is said, was murdered by his bodyguards, and his bones were eventually interred here in the crypt below the royal monastery. After Ethelbald, other royalty followed, the most famous of which was Wigston, who became a saint and who the church is named after, a prince who was murdered by a relative who was vying for power. As you walk the small 16 by 16 foot space of the crypt, it is hard to imagine thousands of pilgrims, a great shrine, and the remains of several Mercian royalty here. However, it would not have housed the entire body. The practice was to bury the body first until it had decomposed, and then move the bones to the crypt in caskets of wood or iron. The remains were then placed on shelves and small recesses in the wall. The crypt at St. Wiston's was one of the most important spiritual sites in the kingdom. And in 873, the great heathen army, as it was then called, showed up in Mercia. As the Vikings moved through the area, they made an encampment in Repton right near where the church and the crypt holding the mighty kings of Mercia lay. By 874, they had conquered the area and Mercia as an independent kingdom was over. The monks and the nuns who lived at the church fled for their lives. They took the most important remains of St. Wigston with them, and the church was subsequently looted and destroyed. Amazingly, the crypt survived. And as the centuries passed, it was covered up. New structures were built on top of the crypt, incorporating portions of the old Anglo-Saxon church. The stairs down to the crypt had floors put over them. The insides of the church were significantly altered when Henry VIII separated from the Roman Catholic Church and St. Wiston's became Anglican. Like a fading memory, the kings of Mercia, the shrine of St. Wigston, the great Viking army, and the crypt were forgotten. It wasn't until 1779 when workmen who were digging a new grave in the chancel of the church literally fell through the floor and into the crypt. No one had any idea that it had ever been there. Then, in 1802, more work was being done on the church. A charnel house that housed the remains of hundreds of skeletons was to be removed in order to build a coach house. In the process, the entirety of the crypt, including the old steps that were made for the procession of the pilgrims and the door that they would have used, were found. As you walk 
down the stairs and the cold air hits your face from the crypt below. And you look at the amazing stone masonry on the columns. You can almost feel a time that has long, long since passed. And it was the fact that the crypt and the stories of the people it held were forgotten and covered up that actually saved it. <laughs>